Hey guys, Dr. Heavenly here, and listen, I have an extra special treat for you this winter, and I'm gonna read you a book. This book is called The Independent Woman and the Boo Who Got Checked. All right, let's start. Y'all know this messy, okay? <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a fierce, strong, successful, and independent queen who ruled the uber fabulous kingdom of Atlanta. Now, I know y'all might think I'm talking about myself because of my beautiful dental office, state of the art, smiles by Dr. Heavenly, and my Heavenly Beauty Beauty Supply Store, and my wonderful husband who works and, and takes care of our kids. But this story is about Sheree, a trailblazing queen and one of the realest housewives in all the land. Some may know Queen Sheree for her later accomplishments like her legendary home, Chateau Sheree, or for designing the iconic She by Sheree joggers. What happened to She by Sheree? Joggers. When? More September. That is uh, spring, summer. September spring, show um. spring, summer. Now, I ain't never seen these joggers. Are they real? Or are they just something she made up? But people losing their damn minds over them, so it must be something to look at. That lets you know how magical she really is. I don't know, but I'm, whenever I see some, I'm gonna get some anyway. This is the origin of a story how Queen Sheree claimed her coveted throne and lit a beacon of independence for women everywhere. All it took was the utterance of one of the greatest proclamations ever spoken in television and feminist history. Who gonna, gonna check, check me, you boo? You see, Queen Sheree's tale could have had a tragic ending. She believed she was married to a football prince. I was married to Bob Woodfield, an NFL player. She believed the prince was providing all her heart desired. Two beautiful children, a huge mansion, and a lavish lifestyle fit for a queen. I don't think I could survive without my entourage. But sadly, her prince did her dirty. As their romance fizzled and marriage ended, he faded out of their children's lives. I have not received child support from Bob in 19 months. Though Queen Sheree was told their mansion was hers to keep, this shady dude hadn't paid the mortgage in months. I need to just give a shout out to my man, daddy. Cause listen, he's been my husband for over 20 years. We've been married 24 years, been together 27 years, and he has never, never forsaken me. And I just know that Jesus, I just thank God for my man. When I hear stories like this, it makes me appreciate him more. Anyway, back to the story. Imagine Kareem Sheree's shock and despair when given just 30 days to vacate her home and move into something quite smaller than she was accustomed to. Now, I wonder if she had Toya in your jeans phone number, because they could have gave her a little bit of help or some tips on moving or something. A good U-Haul driver or something. Explain that you put your house in the market. We're not talking about that. I mean, we all in Atlanta, we got to stick together. But rather than see this as a setback, it propelled Queen Sheree to relish her newfound independence. To my new beginnings, my new home. Drink to that. She finally felt free and decided to throw an event of the year. No, the century, maybe even the millennium. Her vision, the ultimate independence party to celebrate her incredible new and improved life after divorce. Y'all celebrate divorce? Now that's something new to me, but you know, I don't know why I wasn't invited to this party, but I don't, well, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's okay to celebrate a divorce if the man wasn't paying the rent. The only way to pull off a party of this epic proportions was to beckon the big shots, a pair of magical godparents known as Anthony and Keisha. They would execute Queen Sheree's vision with the snap of their fingers. We will not disappoint you. You better not. Yes, I will let everybody know. <laughs> a grand entrance via helicopter? She should have saved some of this damn money to keep her damn house. Y'all got a whole helicopter? The hell is this? Our magical party godparents promised beautiful men would carry Queen Sheree into the party as her guests bowed at her feet and threw rose petals upon her. Gonna make you queen of the night. No. I don't like that. And a scribe would recite a special poem in her honor. This is a brand new beginning for you. It needs to be all about you. Yeah. All about me. 
Sure, it sounds amazing, but did they see the mermaids I had at the daddy's 50th birthday party extravaganza? Yeah, I like the mermaids. They think with it too. They think. But the magical party godparents must have accidentally bit into a bad apple because they certainly turned on Queen Sheree. They stopped taking Queen Sheree's calls, and when she finally reached Anthony, he had the audacity to hang up on her. This who hung up? Now this sounds like it's more to this story. Now nobody wouldn't just start stop taking your calls and hang up on your ass. It had to be something that happened in between this, but I ain't got to do with it. So I'm gonna say hell to the royal no. Worried that her independence party was fading away, Queen Sheree turned to her hairdresser and now famous actor, Miss Lawrence. And then once in a while you gotta get them pipes clean, boo. Oh! Miss <laughs> Lawrence had one thing to say about the party's grandparents' terrible behavior. That's some bullshit. He's obviously an amateur at this. And he reminded Queen Sheree of something very important. Something these nasty, magical party godparents, especially Anthony, had completely lost sight of. Let them know, you the boss, bitch. That's right, that's right, Sheree. It was like Miss Lawrence cast a spell upon Sheree, restoring her with the extra boost of confidence to go forth and demand the party she was promised and she deserved. The boss, okay. bitch. It needs Ooh. to go how I want it to go. So with just four days until the Independence Party, Queen Sheree arrived at the magical party godparents lair looking like a fierce boss bitch. Anthony sat alone before Queen Sheree and quite casually dared to ask, How's everything going? As you tell me. <laughs> Anthony, trying to at least sound professional, promised, Everything's going according to schedule. Except it wasn't. The scribe had yet to reach out to Queen Sheree, and that was the simplest request she had made. Because I didn't get a message from either you or a poet. After all, how could a mere stranger write a compelling poem about everything Queen Sheree had overcame if they never spoke? The party's four days away. I have not heard from the poet. And they were supposed to write a poem and she was supposed to have a helicopter, goddamn. I mean, these are specific instructions. The hell they messed this up. Nah, Queen Sheree bellowed to Anthony, it was unacceptable. She, she should have just texted his ass or wrote him an email or what you wanted anyway. And then that was when the darkness emerged. Both Queen Sheree and Anthony were eerily silent as a chill set about the room. They were summoning the mighty forces of deep, dark, loud anger. If I ask you something, if you can just let me know what's going on. When I'm paying my damn money, I want you to accept my call when I call you. And then Anthony spit out. Uh, I'm a top level executive. Mm -hmm. I expect you to respect my time. And now if I'm buying a whole damn helicopter and I'm getting men to carry me in, I'm spending a cute coin. So evidently if you making this money, boo, you need to be on my time schedule. I'm not gonna be on yours. As long as I call you before 10.30 PM, you should be taking my call, but anyway. The accusations grew more and more heated as Queen Sheree realized she had been had. These so-called magical party godparents had over-exaggerated the amount of party planning magic they actually possessed. The helicopter entrance, nope, no longer happening. I said this is a tentative idea. Where's, Where's Keisha? Keisha, Sheree demanded. This is my event. You deal with me or you deal with no one. Who the hell do Anthony think he is? I don't understand people. If I'm giving you my damn money, you're gonna tell me I'm dealing. I don't wanna deal with your ass. I wanna deal with Keisha or I will not write the check. I don't wanna deal with you. Okay, then you need to take your event and your attitude and be I checked outside. Will. You need a reality check. Yes, Anthony clearly must have been possessed because he went there and he did the unthinkable. He put his finger in Queen Sheree's brother tucking face. You need to get your face hey, out of my face. You need to watch yourself you before you get checked. Well, goddamn. Okay. The mic dropped from Queen Sheree. Who gonna check me, boo? And a spell of silence came across the land for an entire second. <laughs> and then the screaming began. Anthony got in Queen Sheree's face and demanded she get the f out of his office. Oh, get this out of my office. I'll get this out of my office. Put your hands on me. While he didn't call Queen Sheree's bluff, suddenly the office was filled with people pulling on Anthony to take him far away to another dimension, or at least into the other room. 
Before banishing, Anthony made a Hail Mary effort to get the last word, screaming in Sheree's face, your mama is a bitch. Damn, Anthony. Who says your mama? I've been there, done that several times, baby. Mm -hmm. You and your mama. Oh, God. Queen Sheree went on to have a fierce, fabulous independence party that is still talked about in the kingdoms near and far to this very day. And no, she did not need Anthony or Keisha's help. Thank you very much. Instead of a helicopter, Queen Sheree wowed everyone with pole dancing. Okay, she got a hoe on. And forget the poem, because instead, Queen Sheree unveiled a life-size portrait of herself. Okay. She relished in the attention that was lavished upon her and truly remained oblivious to any drama among her partygoers. Even the Battle of the Titans taking place just a few feet away. I'm gonna stop talking to you right now. But that's another story for another day and another cocktail and when daddy's not waiting on me downstairs. The end. I hope you enjoyed our bedtime story, The Independent Woman and The Boo Who Got Checked.